So he perjured himself as well when he said he had no Sandy Hook text messages. But today, earlier today, Alex Jones' defense team filed an emergency motion. Let's take a look. Um, that link uh, linked up a lot of files that shouldn't have been connected to it. Uh, Dude, I love this. He says, he says, this is the oopsie maneuver. Okay, Your Honor, uh, I'm gonna call it take. Uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna file a motion for takesies, backsies. That's right. Let's take a look. Mr. Bankston immediately recognized that the files contained therein were confidential, attorney-client privilege, and contained medical records of people, uh, a whole variety of things that should not be turned over. And he pointed that out to me, and I, I responded to him, uh, what he said, I, I take it this was sent in error. And I responded to him and I said, it, it has been sent in error. Please disregard the link. I will work on preparing a new one. I believe based on that communication that, that that's what was gonna occur. I mean, we have a situation here which is akin to, to me mistakenly giving him the, the key to a room and you know, he opens the door to the room, and instead of finding what he expected to find, he sees other doors. One door is marked confidential medical records. Yeah, and there's just crimes in those other doors. Why the fuck wouldn't you open those other doors? Another door is marked attorney-client privilege. Another door is marked attorney work product. Another door is marked confidential communications. And he recognized that and told me, I don't think he meant to give me this key. And I said, Please throw it away. And apparently, at some point thereafter, um, he said, you know what, I'd kind of really like to see what's behind those doors. And so he took that key and he went back in and he unlocked and went into each one of those doors. And that's why we're here seeking protection under the Texas Rules of Civil Procedure as well as the court's confidentiality order. We are... <laughs> Alex Jones's lawyers, bro. <laughs> Alex Jones's lawyers was like, bro, 30 gigs of data. Just an absolute treasure trove, dude. Just let's just send this and and not even fucking try to try to be like, hey, there's some privileged information in here. Like, just straight up send it. Hit the fucking raw link. That is awesome. This guy's for sure a COVID graduate from DeVry. <laughs> Very concerned about the records that have been disclosed, um, particularly the medical records. Uh, it's, it's very, very concerning to us. Um, and, and that's why we are, we are asking for the relief that they return all the documents, that they destroy any copies that they have. Uh, another thing that, that's concerning, um, and, and I have to, you know, I, I hate to be put into this position by the conduct of plaintiff's counsel. Um, it, it appears that they want to have a mistrial in this case. At any time, they could have come to the court and asked for a ruling. Instead, they rooted through attorney-client privilege materials, work product materials, and then put them before the jury and, and said to Mr. Jones on the stand, that's how I know you lied to me. Your attorneys screwed up and sent this to me. That is grounds for a mistrial, Your Honor. And, and that's why in addition to the Wait, what? that they delete the information from their servers and delete the link, um, we're also requesting at this point, unfortunately, a mistrial. Okay. Sure. Let's correct all of that, Your Honor. Um, first, let me just go through the facts that they were said. Um, it was this link of materials was sent to me. It was sent to Mr. Ogden. It was sent by a Mr. Reynolds' legal assistant, also to Mr. Reynolds, also to Mr. Magley. <laughs> okay. As I informed Mr. Reynolds, we started downloading those. Bro, materials. homie was on the CC, okay? He was CC'd in on it. I, I was busy on trial prep. I told my paralegal, get these on our server. Download everything there. All right. A little bit after he downs, gets his stuff downloading, he's like, wait a second. This file that we now have on our server is, has clogged up our entire server. It's like 300 gigs. What's going on? 
So at that point, which again, material's in my possession at that moment. At that point, I notified Mr. Reynell. And under Rule 193.3, about inadvertent production. All right? It's it's funny to me that in this motion, Mr. Reynell actually blocked quotes 130 to 193.3.2. Wait, I thought it was 30 gigs. 300? Bro, you know there's some weird shit in there. 300 gigs? What the fuck? My man accidentally leaked the entire, like, what the fuck? Oh, that is, I would want to watch all of that. I would want to read through all of that until it gave me fucking brain disease, okay? Oh, my God, that is so much. What does he have in there? What is he texting? He's like 50 years old. How is he texting that much? That's like a fucking... That's literally like a war, uh, Call of Duty Warfare uh, like update pack, dude. What the fuck? COD Mobile. Yeah, he's just playing Call of Duty on his fucking Warfront Warfare, whatever. Warfront. I was about to say Warframe. It's been so long since I've played any fucking video games. Holy shit. Warzone. Fuck! See now, because I'm this much of a fucking boomer, because I'm this much of a fucking boomer, I don't have 300 gigs on my fucking phone, okay? I don't have 300 gigs worth of data on my phone. What the fuck does Alex Jones have? How much trans porn does he have on his phone? How much? I need to fucking know, dude. My man downloaded the entire internet's uh, uh, data on, on trans porn. He just has all of it. Listen, you don't understand. Some of these are 4K. Some of these are 8K. You understand me? I need to see. I need to watch all the trans porn on the internet to, be, to, to hone my skills of being transphobic. Okay? You think, you think this, is the, this is not an everyday thing. But I need to consume all of it. I need to look at it. Slow motion. 4K. Folks, you don't understand. I was doing it for you. Just like I'm doing the top of the hour ad break for you. But in the bottom of the hour. In the middle of the hour. Because right now there's a 60 second ad break coming, folks. I'm trapped in a FEMA facility. This is alexjones.com, infowars.com. I'm trapped inside of a, a FEMA facility, and let me tell you something, folks. I got no access to transporn now. At down here, absolutely devastating. I can't, I can't be saving the the internet from such things. But listen, you no longer want to see. They're making me. They're forcing me to serve the top of the hour, folks. You no longer want to see those ads, though. All you need to do is subscribe. You can do that. For $5 or for free with a Twitch Prime. Folks, you can also get gifted a sub if you're lucky. All right? But the ad break is coming. Doesn't this mean it will be public record? I'm not sure how it works in a civil case. Well, I mean, <laughs> I don't know if it will be public record, but I will tell you that it certainly will meet, it, it certainly will get into the hands of uh, the important. Uh, criminal litigators, uh, investigators on the January 6th uh, committee. That's for sure. Okay, that is actually going to happen. So yeah, uh, Geek Greg, thank you for the 10 gifted subs. Uh, here's the one-minute ad break now, folks. Uh, Geek Greg allowed 10 people to no longer see the ads, folks. Here's the one-minute ad break now. Um, just remember, Alex Jones is paying the lawyer who's ensuring that he's going to have the max payout to the victims. Yes. So I know he knows how to read it. What he still hasn't done, at the moment he is up here requesting a mistrial, is he hasn't followed the rule. Even today, late has not followed the rule. The rule requires that production is, any privilege is waived. Any privilege is waived if 
within 10 days, or if you order a shorter time, but within 10 days, the producing party of when they actually discover, so 10 days from the moment I told them, that they identify specifically the material or information produced and state the privilege asserted. <laughs> Alex Jones lawyers be like, in my defense, it was 300 gigs. Okay? In my defense, it was 300 gigs too many days. Uh, not enough days to, to figure out what was privileged and what wasn't. That's awesome. I have not heard any privilege. I have never heard a privilege asserted over any document. I certainly have not had specific documents identified and what their privilege is. If that happens, and he does identify specific material or information, we must return the specified material. Oh my god, Anarcho Poppy. Think of all the government cover-ups he's exposed in the past 20 plus years of journalism slash radio host. He's fucked up on Sandy Hook, but it doesn't discount all the good he's done. Brother, he is. what good has he done? No, please do not ban this person. I need to know what Anarcho Poppy thinks is the good that he has done, okay? Do not ban this person. Write... Write all of it, King. I will I will comb through it. Okay? I will do my due diligence and comb through all the good work that Alex Jones has done inside of your mind. I want to comb the inside of your mind. Okay? I want to do the due diligence that Alex Jones's lawyer team did not do and comb through all of that data that you have trapped up there. Okay? ...information while the court rules on the privilege. None of that has happened. What's interesting to me is this is not the first time that materials like this have been inadvertently produced in this case. As you may remember from prior hearings, Mr. Barnes inadvertently produced materials. Now in that case, some of that information ended up coming out. They ended up letting you keep some of it, and we ended up talking about it. But there were attorney communi communi excuse me, attorney client communications in there, which you don't know about, which I do, which they did follow 193.3, and they did identify those light eights. Bates numbers said here is the privilege, and when that happened, I promptly returned them and destroyed all my copies. Mr. Raynal is right now using a fig leaf of this motion to say I violated things, to put a fig leaf over his own malpractice, over his own absolute breach of his duties to his own client. And he's attempting to put that on me and doing it in front of a televised audience. That's what he's trying to do. We, so we have that first issue, which is the privilege. That privilege is waived. And at 10 days, I was not required to get a ruling on it. The only time I'm required to get any ruling is when privilege is asserted. And it has never been asserted. Could have even been asserted this morning. He might have come in here and said, Your Honor, I know I'm three days late, but can you please still hear me? And maybe we'd even be hearing him. But right now, it's so frivolous that we haven't even determined the privilege. The second part I want to talk about is that Mr. Reynolds says in his email, Please disregard Please disregard. I mean, can you even waive? Can you even uh, ask for privilege three days after the ten day period? Once the fucking like, once the jury is deliberating, I guess maybe you could. Uh, except you know, I guess you could ask, but I don't know why he didn't even ask for that, and instead he asked for a fucking mistrial. That creates no legal duty on me whatsoever. None. I mean, this person is not going to be charitable to Alex Jones's team of lawyers or Alex Jones after after Alex Jones called her a pedophile too. Like, you know what I mean? Like, if you're expecting leniency from a judge after you called her a fucking pedophile on a defamation suit, I don't know what to tell you. Like, it's probably not going to happen, right? <laughs> Like, like, you want her to be extra considerate to your needs in this circumstance when, you know, she doesn't even need to try to actually get you fucked over because you already have fucked yourself. Any update from Anarcho Poppy? Yeah, let's see what he said. He subbed already. Please don't ban me, Assam. Please don't permaban me. I'm not going to permaban you. I need you to tell me what the fuck are you're talking about. What? I'm not trying to ban you. I want you to know... I want you to enlighten us, dude. What the fuck? I, I need you. Not even want. I need you to enlighten us on all of these wonderful things that, uh, you know, Alex Jones has done. Hi. 
And Mr. Raynal should know this if he's going to come in and try to protect his client's information. And he does know this because, again, he quotes the rules. He says that I will work on preparing you a new link. In other words, the idea here, Your Honor, because I don't think this is true, but the idea was that what he was wanting to provide to me was actually some maybe, I guess, last minute supplemental production, right, before this trial, days before this trial. I don't think that's what would happen. And the reason I don't think that was happening is because Mr. Raynal never worked on preparing me a new one. He never ended up sending me and going, here is the correct materials. Instead, he went to trial and waited until after the client got off the stand and now says, oh, well, I meant to send him more materials. So Hey, Asana, it is common after the jury goes to deliberate for the defense to call for a mistrial in a civil lawsuit. It's pretty typical, almost never works, but it's still common practice. It's, well, a, it's a Hail Mary, no? Mr. Raynal, at that point, if his story is true, knew that he was supposed to supplement his discovery, knew he was supposed to, to provide those materials to me, and when I alerted him that he failed to do that and provided me something else, he just ignored it. So I'm not going to supplement the discovery. So if that's true, if that story is true, we have a willful violation of discovery by Mr. Renault to allow this case to go to trial with documents that he says he needed to provide to me. That in and of itself is actually. But that's not the real story of what happened here. It's just not. We know what happened here. Norm Pattis, up in Connecticut, was passing his file along to Mr. Renault. And I know that because the directories contain like SharePoint OneDrive backups of Norm Pattis' computer. He's providing it to Mr. Raynal, and that, Your Honor, is also independently very troubling. Because Mr. Raynal talks about these medical records. That's what he's concerned about, is these medical records. Well, one thing I can tell you right now, Your Honor, is when I figured out that I had the confidential psychiatric records of all nine Lafferty plaintiffs and their confidential depositions, I immediately destroyed them. And I told Chris Maddy, great plaintiff's lawyer up there, that I've done that. He is on notice that those materials are not in my... Wait, this makes it worse. This makes it worse that he, like, they also did ask for, for a privilege on certain pieces of information. So that means that they, like, knew what the fuck they sent, some of which was privileged information, which they claimed uh, was privileged information. So then he destroyed it. So then it's, like, doubly all good. What the fuck? So isn't it... Wait, am I misunderstanding this? Doesn't that mean that, like, doesn't that mean that the, the, the rest is just totally fair game? Like, you might as well have sent an email saying, like, nah, just use the rest of it, King. Like, it's all good. That's incredible. Lawyers were too lazy to chop up the data and just sent it all. I just don't understand I just don't fucking understand. That was a separate instance. Oh, okay. That was a separate instance where they 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 had used that motion before. Not in this instance. But I told him, look, I trust my staff. They're good people. And I trust that those materials will never leave. But nonetheless, that is a significant data breach against his clients. And what's most concerning is that Mr. Raynaud has not yet made an appearance in the library case. Mr. Raynaud is not allowed to have those documents. Mr. Magliolo is sure not allowed to have the documents of the psychiatric medical records of those library members. Second is confidentiality. The defendant's motion attempts to say that I have somehow violated the spirit of the confidentiality order in this case. The confidentiality order in this case provides a method that if a party believes that it has inadvertently produced confidential material it should be designated confidential, what it must do is specifically identify those documents, provide new copies of those documents with the confidential mark that is required under the protective order. <coughs> to date, Mr. Raynaud has still not done that. Not at all. And it would be impossible for him to do so because the vast, overwhelming majority or the things contained on Mr. Jones' cell phone are not confidential. Mr. Jones may, it, it probably would have behooved Mr. Raynaud to know that if he had produced me those text messages about the financial deal, he, he probably should have designated those as confidential. Not doing so was probably a serious and actionable breach against his client's duties. Bro, don't dunk on him like that. Don't give him grounds to fucking... Him saying that is not enough for uh for for Alex Jones to file like uh what is the term for it when your lawyer sucks ass? 
Like, isn't it's not like a mistrial, but when you say like you just didn't have like legal malpractice, right? Yeah. When the lawyer is mean, no, no, he just like didn't get. When his lawyer is too incompetent, can you do ineffective counsel in a civil trial? I guess you could in a civil suit. Or is that just the criminal thing? I, I actually don't know. I guess you could try to get an appeal off of that. I understand what you mean, but I don't think so in this case. I don't know. It is a mistrial and you get a retrial for ineffective counsel. But even more important than that is all of the stuff in there. He cannot now come into court and claim 2.3 gigabytes of phone material, blanket designation of confidentiality. The protective order prohibits that. You must identify specifically the documents that are. And, and things like, like Mr. Jones and his intimate messages with Roger Stone are not confidential. They are not trade secrets. None of them. There has been no protection ever asserted over these documents. And frankly, Your Honor, I think you realize that this is not the first time that defendants have come into this court with a frivolous motion accusing me of misconduct over the handling of confidential materials. Pre-trial, we dealt with this exact same issue where they tried to claim that the release of Mr. Jones' third deposition was a violation of confidentiality. Again, they asked you for the same thing. They asked you to dismiss the case last time. And in that, we proved that they didn't, they weren't up to speed. They didn't know that it already happened two times, completely consistent with the protective order. I, for right now, I can tell you, Your Honor, I have, as I've told you, there are people interested in watching this right now. I am under request from various federal agencies and law enforcement to provide that fund. Absent a ruling from you saying you cannot do that, Mr. Banks, and I intend to do so immediately following this. I believe that there is absolutely nothing, nothing that Mr. Reynolds.